before we get into our show, I want to quickly take this time to say thank you to our Patreon pledges for supporting the show. If you want to know how you can support the H&C, go to patreon.com slash honoringconquer. There you can read our goals for 2017 and beyond and how you can be an exclusive podcast sponsor and get Patreon-only rewards for free. Visit patreon.com slash honor and conquer for more details if you're a long-time listener or a new listener to the honor and conquer podcast please rate and review this show on itunes stitcher radio and the google play store rate this show a five-star show and tell us what you love about the podcast or what we can improve on in the review section and please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and now on to the podcast you are listening to the Honor and Conquer podcast with me, Dion Sacconi Fraser. Welcome to another Honor and Conquer podcast. We are proudly supported and sponsored by our Patreon supporters. Attain Health and Wellbeing are based out of Wellington, New Zealand. Their goal is to tear down any obstacle that is holding you back from obtaining your goals. They take a holistic approach to mind, body, and nutrition, working with you to set your pace while pushing you to reach beyond your barriers, driving you to become the person you wanted to be yesterday. Visit attainhealth.co.nz. That's attainhealth.co.nz. Start your fitness journey today. We are also supported by Red Bear Barbell. Tim and Jackie Mercer are a powerlifting couple who turned their lives and health around in 2011. They started their journey from overweight and inactive to competitive powerlifting. Collectively, they have lost 125 pounds, developed a sustainable diet, and started coaching others on methods for total health. Visit redbearbarbell.com to see how they can help you crush your goals. And this is a quick shout out to my Patreon pledge supporter, Mr. Jonathan Haggard. He's been with me since day number one before the podcast was even a thing, was even a thought. So Jonathan is, uh, he, how can I, exp uh, how can I describe uh, my bro, John? Um, he is an active yogi. He is an active CrossFitter. He posts very thought-provoking posts on, on his Instagram and I, I love how he interprets things and interprets the world and makes you really think internally about the decisions that we make on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, I think he's a cool dude and if you haven't already you totally should follow him, him on Instagram I wish I was more prepared um, I, I don't know his Instagram handle <laughs> I think I know it off the top of my head but I can't remember I can't remember right now yeah, no, no, here he is. Uh, okay, it's Awahui, Awahubro, Awahubro? It's uh, A-W-A-H-O-U-B-R-O. -A so uh, go follow that dude. Uh, such an awesome dude. I'm not even following him on my personal account. Jeez, I need to do that right now. Um, he's a cool dude. <laughs> as soon as I say that, I'm like, I'm not even following him. Uh, but he's a cool dude, makes you think about stuff, makes you think about life, so yeah. And if you want to become an exclusive podcast sponsor, or if you want to get your own shout out of your very own, go to patreon.com slash honoringconquer and see how you can be rewarded with every month-to-month -month or one-off pledge that you give, okay? So it's not, you're not signing up for any contracts or anything like that, it's month-to-month -month or it can be a one-off, okay? And every single uh, coin, every single dollar goes directly into the show, Okay. So patreon.com slash honor and conquer. We are also proudly sponsored by Me Eat Paleo. Paleo Meanut Butter is a delicious and unique blend of nuts and seeds and is sure to satisfy the fire breather in anyone. You can combine Paleo Meanut Butter with your favorite fruit, veggies, and a smoothie or just straight out of the jar. They are Whole30 approved, non-GMO project verified with no added sugars, not even the ones that are considered acceptable if you are doing paleo, such as honey or maple. And every single jar is handmade fresh. Get your mean up butter at meeatpaleo.com. Use our promo code HONOR for a 10% discount off your online order. We are also brought to you by our lovely friends at Onnit. Go to honorandconquer.com slash Onnit, that's O-N-N-I-T, and see the exclusive discounts that are just available to the HNC podcast listeners. So it's just available to you guys. 
Um, so go to honorandconquer.com slash on, uh, slash on it. And what they're doing right now for a limited time only, they're giving away a th- free 30 count bottle of new mood, which is my favorite nighttime supplement that I take uh, before I go to bed. It helps me uh, wind down after a long day, helps me wind down after gnarly workouts. It uh, sets me up to um, gets into that ritualistic state of getting into bed and getting comfortable and, you know, doing those things before uh, you go to sleep. So it's my favorite thing. Read more information if you want. It's all up on there uh, when you click the hyperlink from honorandconquer.com slash on it. It's got all the information that you need to know, and it's got a video on there as well on the benefits of new mood. So along with that, go to honorandconquer.com slash on it, and we've got some other discounts on there as well just for you guys. Okay, and I have to preference this in saying it is only available in the United States. Okay, I've had a couple of people overseas in the UK go, oh, you, it doesn't work, and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot, guys, sorry. Yeah, it's only for, it's only for the Americans. These dirty, dirty Americans. But anyway, on the show today, I am joined by. Uh, Naomi, aka Sylvia Gold. This show has been a work in the process for, geez, weeks. Maybe a month, actually. Holy shit, thinking about it now. Um, we've been both busy. Uh, timelines is definitely a, a thing as well. When you're doing a show with anyone in a, in a different time zone, let alone a different country, you have to kind of figure out an even ground. And she was available on Sunday at 2 p.m., which is Saturday. 10 p.m. my time so it was uh my very first late night podcast we had a very fascinating talk I was really enjoying it uh we talked about her start in modeling what made her jump into modeling her career through that uh that profession as well and her journey into DJing how uh what enticed her to do it we talked to uh talked to her about her her past life as a drummer for a little bit for a brief moment in time And we talk heavily about social media and the impact that it has had on her career, not only as a model, not only as a DJ, but just her as a human being. And we talk about those impacts outside of those professions in her real life, day to day, um, people stopping her in bars and, you know, hating her for no exact reason. So it was an interesting talk. I I really, really enjoy it. And I really want to do another show with her sometime soon. But anyway, without further ado, I give to you, Sylvia Gold. All right. I am on the phone with the talented uh, Naomi. We're going to go with Naomi. Okay. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, She's she's currently in New Zealand. It's a a Sunday over there, 3 p.m. And it's uh, 10 o'clock my time on a Saturday. So mm. this is my first podcast I've ever done it this late at night. So Oh uh, wow, exciting. Yeah. You're like episode 105 and you're the wow. first person I've ever done at night. So that's I well, guess it's a You normally pr- do it during the day. Yeah. Is that what yeah, you I do, do it. Yeah. Yeah, usually I'll uh, do it at nine o'clock or eleven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but because oh, of sorry, time sorry difference. To keep you, sorry to keep you up. Like <laughs> I know no, it's <laughs> usually usually at night time. Ten o'clock is the 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 last walk for my dog, so oh, that's okay. yeah, that's the only. So your dog your dog is now suffering. I'm sorry. <laughs> pretty much. Oh, the wife is looking after it. The wife oh, is sweet. keeping our dog company. Yeah, she's Good. all right. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy about that. Yeah, but um, a little backstory on how I know Naomi. Uh, I've never met her in real life. Um, nope. I've only followed her yeah <laughs> through Instagram and social media channels. Actually, through uh, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Cameron, who lives in Wellington, and back in back in the day uh, when I was in hardcore bands and metal bands, Cameron would always come out to shows. Uh, he actually reposted a picture of you, and this is I remember the day when he reposted the picture because uh, <laughs> I immediately <sighs> thought that the the image looks strong. And yeah. you as a person, I find quite intimidating. And oh, really? at the time, I, I said to myself, I need to be friends with someone like that because it has to be something that I can learn from that person. So, oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's so, a, oh, I feel privileged. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. But, like, it's, it's me. Yeah. For, for me, when I see people like that and when they make me feel a certain way like that, it's, I don't know, it's, there, there has to be some talent in there of that. Just through one image on Instagram, it made me feel yeah. like, man, this person is so cool. She looks so oh, strong. That's cool. 
That's I want to know more about this person. So I started following you and I was, yeah. I was right in that assumption, everything that yeah. you kind of shared and the words that you kind of had and putting yeah. them out there on social media is just so strong, so oh, powerful. Success. That's good. That's yeah. Success. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, you posted something about social media a long time ago. Now it was this year in May, um, which I found quite fascinating. But before we get into that, um, how did you even come into the world of of modeling? If you if uh, if that's if that's not your trade, right? No, nah, no, nah, it's not. It's kind of just something I kind of do, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. On this, I wouldn't. Like, I don't like to label myself as a model, um, mm. but like obviously I go by the term because you know what else would you call it? It's, I've struggled yeah. to come up with a word, so I just kind of accept it. But um, I don't know. Like I I got Instagram. How old was I when I got Instagram? I don't know, I feel old thinking about it now. But um, <laughs> I kind of got Instagram and I started following, like, girls that I found really inspiring or, you know, like mm -hmm. I liked a lot of I liked a lot of self-confidence. I think I was about, like, 19 or 20 when I gotcha. started on social media. And I kind of just was, like, looking for, like, I don't know, I just started following things that I liked and I kind of looked up to women and I was like, oh, that's really awesome. Mm -hmm. And, like, I wonder if I could do that. And, you know, I from the age of, like, I say 13 to 21, 2021, there's no, there's like no pictures of me, like none, because I hated having my photo taken and I don't know, like I think <laughs> just naturally I lacked a lot of self-esteem and kind of just didn't enjoy having my picture taken and being on social media and kind of being fed that through like a computer or a cell phone through like women that I looked up to, it mm. kind of made me feel like, well, if they can do it, kind of like, why can I not do it? Mm -hmm. So... I started following some girls and like local Kiwis or some Aussie girls and then kind of just started talking to them through Instagram, being like, how did you go about it? And just asking some questions. And then I did a lot of background research and kind of just contacted a local photographer and was like, look, I have never had my photo taken. Like, I refused to have my picture taken at school. Like, wouldn't let my wow. parents buy my school photos. <laughs> like, it was, it was pretty bad. So I was like, this is what I want to do and I'll, I want to pay you for it. And I kind of just want to do it as a personal thing so I can look at a picture and kind of be like, okay, this is what I look like. And I don't know, kind of just accept myself. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. But being, so, yeah. being in control of what the picture looked like as such. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you really, so this was something that you didn't wake up one day and go, I want to be the best model in the entire world. Nah, this was something not that at all. It, it was almost something that you wanted. It was like almost a fear, almost. It sounds like anyway, yeah, how you're describing yeah. it. Yeah. And you wanted to overcome that by just taking that first step of taking Definitely. photos, you know, asking a photographer to say, Hey, can you take a photo of me? And then yeah. all of a sudden it kind of escalated and snowballed into, uh, into what we have now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, and like it's... you're right. It was it was a fear. Like I was I was scared of it. Like I was scared of being on the internet and kind of like seeing what I look like. So I was like I was mm -hmm. just tired of being scared of myself as a person. So I was like this. The only way to stop being scared is to actually do it. You know, they say you have to face your fear. So I was like, well, screw it. I'm just gonna do it. For sure. And were you a barber at this time? I was a hairdresser. A hairdresser. Yeah. Gotcha. So I, I worked in a salon. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm I'm a trained hairdresser, but I now do barbering solely. Yeah. Wow. And you're a manager of I can't remember the place where you are, but are you a yeah. manager, like the store manager yeah, of that? So place? I manage Barker's Groom Room. Which oh, is so okay. we're we're a add on to a men's clothing store. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I I know the name through the clothes, but I didn't know it had its own like uh like its own barber place where you yeah. get your hair done, which is so sick. Like, That's... We've, we've been there for like four years now, and we've got about six, I think some, four, four and soon to be six shops around New Zealand that have barber shops in them. Damn, so, man. yeah. No, it's pretty cool. I, re I really enjoy it. I love it. It's a great brand. So I'm stoked. Nice. There. So you started as that, and then you found yourself into this. Uh, I mean, I'll use the word, even though we don't have another word, but you found yourself into this whole yeah. modeling thing. How did that, yeah. I mean, you, you took your first set of photos and how did it, did it feel comfortable? What were you feeling during that time when you're I on was the set? And super yeah. nervous. Like the difference here is like, I went straight in and I went straight in and I just did nude modeling. Like I was mm -hmm. like, screw it. If I'm going to do it, I'm just going to do it because like, mm -hmm. I, I might as well just jump in at the deep end. That's how I learn. I just jump in at the deep end and mm -hmm. I just learn from, you know, making mistakes or whatever. 
For and sure. I, I did it, and I kind of like I went through the Suicide Girls website, and I just mm-hmm. kind of made heaps of friends on there. And like my set went up, and it got quite like it did quite well, and the feedback mm-hmm. was good. And obviously, you always get negative comments. And then after doing that one, I was like, well, that wasn't too bad, you know. Like I feel like I've learned and I've I've grown a little bit from it, so I might as well just do another one. And then you know, <laughs> it just kind of it just kind of rolled over, and then. The, as time went and the better and more confident I got at it, then I, mm-hmm. people started coming to me to work with me. Yeah. So it kind of just evolved naturally, I think. And I think because I wasn't in it solely for, I don't know, attention or anything, it just kind of naturally blossomed. Kind of happened, yeah. It's yeah. Uh, it's funny because I, I wrote a quote down in the insert the sorry the Facebook quote, uh, sorry, the Facebook yeah. uh, uh, status update that you had. Yeah. And it was it kind of resonated with me, and it, and it was uh, I decided I wanted to try see what other people saw when looking at me, and wanted to let my inner artist out. So yeah. for me, like I never did know. I write that? Wow, you did, you did. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> yeah, I did. I wrote it down in my notes for the show. Crazy. Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna pat myself on the back there. Yeah, you're <laughs> so po- you're so poetic. <laughs> Shit. Um, um, but it resonated with me because you never know how you're uh, perceived either online or in real life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're only for me. I just want people to be comfortable around me because I'm a I'm a big burly Sa- Samoan dude. Yeah. And I'm a big brown Samoan dude, and <laughs> yeah. uh, for, but I want people to be comfortable around me that they can share last with me. But I yeah. don't know if that's coming across right. So when I yeah. when I uh, when I read that, I never knew if I was doing it right. Yeah. So uh, sure. I think I think for you taking those steps is I, I feel like the right way moving forward for you for you yeah. as. Definitely. As an artist and as a person yeah. and doing all these cool things in the world and yeah. and now you're being this quote unquote model. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know what Suicide Girls is, uh, for those listeners who do not know, uh, how yeah. would you describe Suicide Girls from your perspective? So it's it's an alternative modeling I wouldn't say it's kind of an agency, I guess, but it's open to everyone. So mm-hmm. Yeah, I say it's, it's a modeling agency for the alternative looking female. Alternative so, looking female. Well, they kind of accept like all body shapes, skin color, hair color. Mm-hmm. They accept everything, but you have to have at least like three, three tattoos to kind of be a part of it. <laughs> so I think there's somewhere in some like little fine print where it states that you need to have a minimum of like one or two, you know? I think there no might way. even be. I think there might even be girls that aren't tattooed. I might have even got that wrong, but like, wow. I'd say 99% of them are tattooed. So it started off as like this platform where more alternative looking girls could go and feel more comfortable. Gotcha. You know, because how, how like it kind of used to be, I don't know, a bit like frowned upon to get tattooed or modified. And it was just <laughs> like a really nice society for the more creative individual to go and like, you know, make friends and kind of just share. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I'd say it's just like a modeling agency targeted towards that. Sweet. And you and you were a part of that collective as well. So that's how you Yeah. Yep. Like I'm gotcha. not an I'm not an official suicide girl. There's a whole range of like you have to put up your photo set and it has to get purchased by the company for you to officially be a suicide girl. So oh, I'm wow. technically just classed as a hopeful. So I may oh. never become one. Yeah, it's there's yeah. hates to it. But um, like I'm on the website and I talk to all the girls and you know like on their Instagram and stuff. But I'm not an official suicide girl. Yeah, and yeah. Through, so through social media, as you were, you know, you created this account, you did this photo, uh, this photo shoot. Now you've got a whole bunch of photos. You've put them out there. What was the um, what was the reception like? Did you get a lot of support? And ov- uh, obviously, with a whole bunch of support comes a lot of negativity. And yeah. I guess what the question is is. Um, what did you get and how did you uh, maintain like balance just for you as a human? Well, to, to start with, it was really hard because like obviously I'd gone from being this real quiet person to kind of like, oh my God, like, she's naked on the internet now kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You gotcha. know, so it was quite quite hard for a lot of my long-term friends to kind of grasp that I- idea. Um, mm-hmm. But I did have a lot of support, like a lot of support from my mum. My mum's like my biggest fan and 
Like <laughs> my boyfriend at the time was real supportive and like my close friends. But with support, you're always going to get hate. You know, with putting yourself out there on the internet, there is always going to be somebody that no, just yeah. wants to say something bad about you. And, you know, being quite mm -hmm. young, like 1920, I was quite mm -hmm. young minded as well. Mm -hmm. It kind of, it did hurt to read things where people were like, just kind of saying how bad you looked or they didn't like your hair color or, you know, just pathetic stuff. Mm. Just but random like, shit. Yeah. yeah, just random mm. crap that doesn't even matter. But I feel like yeah. you kind of need that negativity to push you even harder to be like, mm. you know? Yeah, so totally. To keep a balance, I guess, I kind of just looked at the negative as a positive. Mm -hmm. So I'm the kind of person, I rather, I rather you give me a negative comment mm -hmm. than a positive one, because what can I do with a positive you know, like, I like I like to get critiqued so I can then work on that. Wow. Because if, if someone just keeps giving you positive comments, like you can't improve yourself. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, it's it's uh, there's no room for improvement in there. No. You know what I mean? And yeah. I I personally believe that nothing is ever perfect. Like you can always try a little bit harder, or you can always make a situation a little bit better. So by reading a negative comment, I'd be like, okay, I don't agree with that. But I'm going to look at it from your point of view and then just see if I can take that on board and make it work for me. <laughs> what, is the, what, is the, what is the most stupidest shit that has ever been told to you via social media? Oh, I don't know. Like, the list is endless. Like, endless. What is... Like, so, I don't know. Like, it's always just stupid comments, you know? Like, yeah. oh, your skin is too pale or something. You know, just <laughs> really... Really retarded comments that it's like, really? Yeah. Like, you actually bothered to write that? You know? Or they'll, <laughs> they'll pick up on your spelling or, like, your, like, why are your nails done like that? You know, why did you do that? And it's like, why are you looking at that, you know? <laughs> yeah, true. It is one so, of those things where, like, when, when people kind of say that stuff, why does it even matter? You know what I mean? Like, why? Why does it even I matter? Like the person in the moment loved doing it, so yeah. just let the person do it, you know? I feel like people are, that are insecure in themselves, like, because I used to look at things that way. Like, people that are insecure in themselves are intimidated and threatened that someone is actually, you know, putting themselves out there, and that scares them. So they're mm. like trying to bring them down slightly. So I don't, I don't know. That's the only way I look at it. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is kind of crazy how that mentality works. And uh, what's funny? Well, not funny because it's not funny. But yeah. uh, what's interesting uh, in your in your uh, going back to your Facebook status that you had, people would create um, fake profiles on Instagram yes. yeah. and reach out to you that way. But you. You blocked a whole bunch of people. So you, would you assume that it would be those people creating those ghost accounts I and reaching so, out like, to you? There was one point where I had someone that kept creating an Instagram profile of me and, like, stealing my photos. And, and it must have been somebody that I knew because they blocked all of my local friends and all my family members. So it's like, oh. how does someone... It's either someone that's actually crazy in the head and done so much research on me or it's somebody, an old friend, like, you know, live. I don't know. <laughs> There are oh a couple of people goodness. out there that like now kind of dislike me that might have done it. But I don't know. I don't want to point fingers. But people will just go out of their way and, you know, like kind of stalk you a little bit and make fake profiles and steal your content. But it's all part and parcel of it. It kind of comes with putting yourself out there, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And <laughs> along know? that journey, along that journey for you, you started becoming, well, I guess you've always been interested, but I don't really know. But uh, yeah. you started DJing. So where yeah. did yeah where did that idea come from? Has it always been something you've wanted to dive into? Um, I've always loved music and always mm -hmm. been interested. Like I always wanted to play an instrument. Like I started playing the drums when I, I think I was like twelve, oh, no, sick. fourteen, fourteen. Mm -hmm. But I quit because I wanted to bash the shit out of them. You know, like rock stars do, and then they like thrash up their drum set. Uh huh. Well, yeah. I, I wanted to do that, and he wouldn't let me, so I quit. And then from then on, I was always like, so I, just be in, <laughs> I just want to be in control of like, you know, my own kind of music. And I'd always thought about DJing, but again, same with like the boxing thing. I was quite intimidated to go somewhere gotcha. or just go into a bar and be like, hey, can you teach me? Mm -hmm. And someone just approached me via Instagram and they were like, hey, I was unemployed at the time and we just got talking and they were like, uh, I joked about being their receptionist. And they're like, okay. oh, no, nah, we, don't, we don't need that, but um, do you want to learn how to DJ? And I was like, are you serious? And they're like, yeah. And they flew, they flew me up to Auckland for a week and taught me how to DJ. 
what the so, fuck? <laughs> I was just really, I was just really for, fortunate and like lucky that kind of my Instagram kind of grabbed their attention, and yeah. we just got talking. And they're like, yeah, we're looking for a female to kind of teach and brand. So do you want to come up? And I went up, and they taught me how to DJ, and I played some gigs, and we kind of fell out. <laughs> <laughs> and I went back to Wellington. Um, but they gave me a life skill, which I'm now loving and yeah. making money off of and having a great time. So You're now taking yeah. full advantage of. Yeah, exactly. So That's it. But, you know, I, I really enjoy it. I kind of just fell into it, kind of like the modeling. I don't know. I believe in the art of attraction. You know, like <laughs> if you feel something and you want something and you put it out to the universe, it's going to kind of find you. That's totally. how I feel. Yeah, yeah, always kind of. If it's uh, one of those things. If you work hard and you say it out loud, you know, almost yeah. becomes it almost becomes real. No, you know it does, what I mean? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I it's, agree it's with funny that. how it's funny how you say that you fell into it because it's all, <laughs> you fell you <laughs> fell into modeling, you fell into DJing. Yeah, and it's and I'm reading as I'm going through my notes as well. It, it, you you mentioned that having a following or a decent following at your 30 k mark. Yeah. You got, you know, you gained access into free uh, shows and free clothes yeah. and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Was it overwhelming at times? So overwhelming. Like, so, like, I'd wake up in the morning and, like, at the time, like, 30K isn't that much if you think about it. Like, I follow some girls that I know that have, like, you know, they're nearly a million followers. But for me, 30K was, like, massive. And even when I hit my 50K point, it was huge. And mm -hmm. just just the anxiety it can sometimes give you like waking up and your phone is like blown up your emails i would have like 30 emails in my inbox being like hey we're a local brand like give us your address here's here's a free t-shirt hey do you oh want to come gosh. to this gig hey like do you ever come to the the states hey do you ever do this hey we've got some teeth whitening do you want some green tea and it's like <laughs> oh my god like, do you can want you some just green leave tea? me alone <laughs> and i was like yeah i'll take your green tea but if it's shit i'm gonna say it's shit oh no no you need to post this and say it's good i was like well then i don't want it do you know oh what I mean? yeah it's funny so how they do that that yeah. side of social media opened up to me and that is the side that i did not like it's like, I will promote your product if I like it, but if I get it and I don't like it, I'm going to say I don't like it. And that's Dang. for me was kind of the tipping point of like, I don't want to promote yeah. brands. For sure. Yeah, so it, it was very overwhelming because you have all of these like companies and most of them were quite small and not many people knew. And you appreciate the offer. Like I was always grateful for a free t-shirt or free merchandise or free anything, but it's just mm -hmm. the pressure that comes with it of, you know, doing that product mm -hmm. proud. Justice. I guess? Yeah. Does that make justice? Totally. There we go. Yeah. That's a better word. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, it is a pressure. It's, um, if so, from my perspective, for me, like I've got pod, uh, sponsors for these, this podcast. And yeah. no matter if whatever the contract is, I have to tell them, like, hey, I swear in everything on my show. Like, I, yeah. s I say bad words. And yeah. if I, if I is think okay? something, yeah, I, if, if something is fucked up, I'm not gonna not. I'm gonna say that it's fucked up. So yeah. no, before I sign this contract, you have to know that. So yeah. uh, I exactly. totally. It, it is. It it almost le it almost lessens the burden, but yeah. the burden is still there because it almost becomes a job that you need exactly. to. Yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's. I so I totally get what you're saying with that. Yeah. Yeah, it was just it, like was I, I appreciated it and it was great and like you know I loved helping out brands and you know there was heaps of things that I learned and I got and things that I loved but it's just that pressure of you have to you know I'm going to give you this product here is a quote that you have to post these are the hashtags you have to use and it needs to be posted within a week and I'm like wow. I'm, I'm working a full time job you know and like a DJ yeah. on the side like I can't promise you that I'm going to post this in yeah. a week's time and I can't promise you I'm going to like it so. You can send it to me, but I can't promise you I'm going to do that. You know. So did they pay? Did they pay you at least? I never got paid sponsorship. Like I wasn't uh, big enough for that. Um, and I kind of I don't really know if I agree with that. Like I'm, I, yeah. I'm just the kind of person that's like I don't want to take someone's money for just like taking a picture with some tea. Do you know what I mean? It's like I feel yeah. like I'm cheating them. Like well, I get it. But it's like, they're paying for your adverts. They're they're paying you because you're an ad, you're advertising for them. They're yeah, paying for definitely. that spot on your Instagram yeah. page. Yeah, you know, and it's it's a little. I mean, I it, it goes back to what you said. You appreciate the free stuff, but yeah. it's like, hey man, free stuff isn't gonna like 
pay my bills or yeah, you know exactly. get my yeah. grocery shopping you know what yeah. i mean but uh and yeah that's kind of what i was learning along the way you know like i'd never done anything like this before so it was like it was a very unknown territory for me and i was kind mm -hmm. of like going in like and it was all like smoky and i was like i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> so i was kind of just kind of just winging it and trying my best but it was very overwhelming and especially when you work a full-time job and uh, you just get all this expectation and then your yep. followers start like expecting stuff from you and it's like oh chill out like yeah, instagram's sure. meant to be fun <laughs> yeah exactly right it is meant to yeah. be fun you know but uh, and that's it's the same for me like i do this podcast and you know i've had my hand full of uh you know hate mail and everything in the past but at the same time people are terrible but, yeah people are terrible but at the same time behind the, the the phone or the podcast or the audio I'm still working at Lululemon, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm exactly. still working my my full time job. I love Lulu. I love Lulu and I'm in low, by the way. I, I know. Right. I know you love Lululemon because every time I see your photo and I see like a flow eye bra or something like that, I'm like, I'm looking more at the bra and how cool it is. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. You're, you're great at your job. <laughs> <laughs> so I see that flow eye bra, that looks yeah. good. <laughs> awesome. But yeah. But um, moving on, you hit your 45K mark. Yeah. And we're here it kind of gets a little murky in terms of your public, uh, when you're out in public. So there was yeah. one point, yeah, where, there was one point where you said you disliked telling people about your Instagram account. Yeah. And is that, and is that because they would look you up straight away and go, oh, oh, you're, you're yeah. Instagram famous? It kind of turned into like this whole awkward, situations like i'm just like at the end of the day i say to people i am just a normal person like i just go to work i do my job and i do what i enjoy and i don't like attention like people go mm -hmm. oh but you get your photo taken i'm like well it's completely different you know going yeah. and having your picture taken and putting a picture out to the world of something that you're proud of it's completely different to like rocking mm -hmm. up to a bar and you know wanting to be the center of attention do you know what i mean so gotcha. like, i'm a very i like to just go about my business day to day mm -hmm. and not really interact with that many people mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's Fair like yeah, yeah yeah i just want to buy my coffee and go to work and <laughs> like, I'd, I'd walk in somewhere and i'd be buying a coffee or i'd be out at a bar and i'd be ordering a drink and people would be like oh so what do you do and there was this one time i was djing this guy was like, oh, so just start chatting to me. And I was like, oh, my name's blah, blah, blah. He's like, so what are you doing? I was like, I'm the DJ. I was like, oh, cool. And he was like, what's your DJ name? I was like, Sylvia Gold. And he was like, pardon? I was like, Sylvia Gold. He was like, are you serious? I was like, oh, no. Mm. I was like, yeah, why? What's that? What's happened? Like, have I, am I meant to be somebody else? Or, and he was like, nah, I follow you. Like, I'm such a fan. Like, can I get a photo? And I was like, what? Oh, well, this is the first time goodness. someone had asked me for a picture. And I was like, um, like yeah i guess but i'm kind of gonna start work now <laughs> so, and it was just very very intimidating like it was lovely and i appreciated it but the whole thought that somebody i didn't know knew who i was was a little bit mm. weird for me and he was like oh you're not what i thought you'd be in real life and i was like well what do you mean he was like i don't know oh. you're, you look a lot you're a lot skinnier or you're a lot like shorter and i was like cool like <laughs> oh sweet i'm a human yeah. being motherfucker yeah, like, like, all good. <laughs> yeah i'm at my work right now what do you, you yeah. want to do this photo or not <laughs> yeah exactly so i don't know i just struggled with that whole concept of that people i didn't know knew me but not me yeah knew yeah. my social media me not the real me yeah, it's like they, they know of you, but they don't yeah. know you, you know? But that's it's, the thing, is like, they think they know you, they'll start trying to, like, connect with you. And yeah. it's like, that's my social media life, that's cool, we can talk about that, like, you can get a picture, like, whatever, we can chat, but that's not, you know, that's not Naomi that likes to sit down and have a coffee and watch shit TV, you know? Like, I'm, it's, you've got to <laughs> learn to differentiate between the two, kind of. Uh huh. And I think, I think people get a bit lost with that. And it's like, I'm not really, I'm the person I put out on social media because like I am real, but at the same time, like there's an alter ego side to it as well. Oh, totally. Which of I think people don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. And to, people don't understand that part. And I mean, for me, I, I mean, I try to be as real as, as possible, but yeah. when I do the shows and everything like that, when I pre-record the shows, there is like a different, a different me that kind of comes across the audio but when i'm talking to people like you over the phone or my guests in real life 
yeah. I try to keep it as a hundred percent real as possible. But exactly, people don't necessarily know that on and off switch, so they expect you to be that person all the time, twenty four seven, and it's twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah. And and especially with that person who probably came up to you, they're they're so used to seeing you in all these really cool poses and all these really yeah. cool outfits and yeah. uh in this amazing scenery and then they're seeing you at work, you know. Here I am prob- like at a sports bar, like I, w- I wasn't even meant to play tonight. I've just come out in track pants, like Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and like, oh, I didn't recognise you. I was like, Well, sorry. <laughs> There's that weird expectation of what you're meant to be and what you're supposed to be in their eyes. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, which is very, very odd and very weird. <laughs> Humans but are like, weird, but great. Yeah, there is, yeah, exactly. Humans are very weird. Um, but there's one thing that you said that uh, in your little thread, and it was a girl that came up to you and said, I don't like you because my boyfriend follows you on Instagram. Yeah, and that, it was that kinda, soul destroying. <laughs> So really, what made you, what made, it's just, so, yeah. I think everything affects you differently depending on headspace. And I think probably at that time I was in kind of like, I hadn't had a great day and my headspace was kind of, wasn't that great. So if it had happened on another day, I probably wouldn't have taken it as offensively. But mm-hmm. um, I was going through like a really, a bit of a bad breakup with my ex and I was just like, man, I was just going out to like DJ and do my job. And she came up to me. She was obviously, like, wasted. She was super drunk. Mm. She started talking to me. She was like, you're Sylvia Gold. And I was like, yeah, hi, like, nice to meet you. Like, what's your name? And she was like, I don't like you. And I was like, that's all, that's all good. Like, you don't have to like me. Like, I'm not here. Like, <laughs> I, I really don't care if you like me or not. Like, I've never done anything towards you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just so being fucking myself. random. <laughs> yeah, being myself and going oh. about my job, like, you know, just trying to end the conversation. She was like, no, no, I don't like you because my boyfriend follows you. And I was like, well, I'm not in control of that. Like, I'm not in your boyfriend's brain being like, oh, my gosh, you have to follow Sylvia Gold. I was yeah. like, he is a human being. He is allowed to do what he wants. Yeah. And you can't just hate on me for that, you know, which yeah. is where I, I feel people get very, I don't know, they just get very insecure about people following other people on social media. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you need to realize it's just a picture, you know? Like, yeah, exactly. It's but at the same time. That the fact that the she came up to you and said that that shows some real insecurity or trust issues yeah. between that relationship. Like exactly, jeez, like my you'd be surprised I, how much it happens though. Like it's bad. really, does yeah. it happen a lot? It's happened a few times, or like oh, hear comments about things. It's like not anymore because like I deleted that account and started a new one. But mm-hmm. when I did have a bigger following, it would just be like oh yeah, like girls I didn't even know had me blocked from there social media accounts so weird just so because they didn't want to see my feed because they it's like well you're not even following me so like you must have an issue you must be looking at my account every day to see what i'm doing (laughs) wait they didn't want to see your feet my feet sorry (laughs) feet my instagram feet oh your feet (laughs) my feet feet? feet are pretty ugly to be fair i'm not into feet so i (laughs) I would agree with them on that no one wants to see those (laughs) well i remember i remember back uh it was a photo you posted and i guess your feet were in it and yeah. the, the comments were all about your feet <laughs> yes honestly like i said previously humans are weird you do not understand how weird some people are <laughs> oh, this, it was oh my gosh this is a pretty graphic man <laughs> like people people were offering me serious money for like videos of my toes and i was like i can't no. do it i can't I was like, I can't do it. I'm sorry. He was like, but I'll give you like this much if you just send me a video. I was like, I can't. Like to me, like that's all good that you like it. I'm not judging you for it. But I just feel weird taking your money for my toes. Like I just what? It's just okay. not my thing. How how okay? How much were they gonna give you for a for a, a ten second video of your toes? Oh, oh. Like, I think it was like four four or five hundred dollars just for like what? you know. Yeah, like people were crazy for feet, eh? <laughs> <laughs> people were crazy uh, for feet, eh? <laughs> I don't know why. It's just something about it. Like, I'm not judging them for it. Like, you know, everyone's got their thing, but you just don't realize how many people out there actually like feet. Oh, lot. my gosh. Mm. Even just like, oh, just thinking about it and just the fact that some guy was on the other end of the phone going, I want to see these toes. I'll give you 400 <laughs> bucks for it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's very reasonable, but I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> very reasonable, but thank you. 
<laughs> Let me pay your rent. Give yeah. me a photo of your oh, toes. Oh, you want to pay my rent? Maybe. Nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not push it that far. But yeah, um, so getting towards the, I, I don't want to say the end of your <laughs> of your social media, but when you got to your 50k mark, you did what most people would think is crazy because you know yep. uh status is everything these days on social media and, and yep. follow count is you know is gold um yep. but you deleted your account at 50k so what was the yep. process in that why why did you kind of want to do that it was quite difficult <laughs> like I, I was looking at my phone for like three hours and i was like do i do this do i not because once you click that delete Instagram notifies you and they're like, if you delete this, you can never get it back. And I was like, why have you said that? You've made it so like <laughs> impending doom. Like yeah. I'm now petrified to do it. And I was just looking at that notification for so long. But previously to that, I was just, I was working a lot and, you know, I was barbering and I was doing some modeling and I was DJing and I was, I don't know, I was being really social and I was just enjoying kind of being myself and then having the pressure of Instagram was quite difficult and I hated going out and people, like I went to a bar, I went to a gig and I heard people, I went out onto the deck because my friend was going to have a cigarette yeah. and I heard someone whisper go, oh my God, that's Sylvia Gold. And it made <sighs> me feel really, it made me feel really uneasy because I was like, oh, oh, wow. like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that because... I don't know, like, is your girlfriend going to come out of nowhere and, like, throw a drink at me or something? Or Yeah. And that kind of, I just started thinking about that. And then there was a few things that led up to it. And I was just like, I'm just tired of getting all of this hate for kind of no reason. Mm. And I kept getting told that, like, oh, you know, following is everything. Status is everything. You need followers if you want to succeed. You need followers if you want to be a better model or be a better DJ, you need a following. And I understand that. Like, I do know that you do need people to back you if you want to push your product. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to make the point that, like, Instagram is not everything. Like, mm -hmm. having these 50K followers does not define you as a person. It doesn't mean you're going to fail if you don't have mm -hmm. them. I was like, I appreciated all of their support and all of their help, but I just said to myself, I can do my job just as good and even better with or without an Instagram account. So I kind of just oh. deleted it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> for a couple of days, I felt really not empty because that sounds so dramatic. <laughs> but like when you've been posting on Instagram for so long and replying to comments and stuff, you do get left with this free time where for a few days I was like a bit sad about it. But then I was like, mm -hmm. no, like, I'll just start doing something else. And I picked up a couple of other, other hobbies. And I don't know, I just wanted to prove to people that you don't have to have a massive social media following to be confident because mm -hmm. everyone's all like, oh, you know, you take your clothes off and you're naked on the internet for confidence and, you know, you're selling yourself for all of this. And it's like, no, I do it for myself. Like, I don't need followers to achieve my life goal, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I kind of just killed it. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. Uh, I just killed it. <laughs> yeah, I just was like, eh. And then I regretted it. And then, I don't know, it was a very up and down roller coaster for a couple of weeks of course but no, it's cool. i really i'm happy that i did it it's because it's almost it's almost work you know what i mean like yeah th there is a level of work that you put into getting Definitely. that following and creating yeah. that page so i and think that's what, sorry yeah. that's what i was saying to so many people like girls would just be all bitter and be like how did you get that many followers like i post this and i don't get that and i said you don't understand the like amount of effort and like hard work and hours and days I put into posting and re researching my hashtags and, you know, finding targeted audiences as to what product was what and just really pushing myself media-wise to to get that following. I said it was really hard and it turned into a, a job more than anything else. It was like a full-time job, but I wasn't making anything from it. Yeah. So I've taken the joy out of it. It's like Instagram sucked my soul away and kind of, yeah, shared it with 50,000 followers. So I just, yeah, it was a job. Dang. So you're, you've, you created your new account and now yeah. I don't, I don't know what your follow account is right now, but are you, are you, uh, do you still get the same reactions because people know you, I guess uh, people know you now. Yeah. Um, but do you still get the same reactions as you did when you're at 50, 50 K to, I don't know what you're at. Three no. K now. I, I think I'm just, uh, yeah, just over. 
three, I think. I'm not quite sure. See, before I used to be really obsessed with my, I'd know my number exactly, my number followers. And now no I'm just way. like, nah. yeah, I would know if somebody stopped following me. Like, I was obsessed to start with. You just get Whoa. obsessed with the number. Yeah, you get really into it. Eh? It's so embarrassing. Oh. Like, you get kind of cut when someone unfollows you. You're like, ah. Oh. And then it kind of goes because you get another one. But that's another thing. Is like, <laughs> but that's another thing. Is like, I didn't want to be that person. I didn't want to be that social media, like, oh, my God, I lost a follower. You know, a follower's mm -hmm. a follower. It doesn't even matter. But I'm at just over 3K now, and I've kind of changed my attitude and my mindset towards it. And I post more of, like, what I want to post. I feel mm -hmm. a lot more in control. And I don't know, like, I'll turn off commenting on some of my photos so people can't, like, you know, I just can't be bothered with people's comments sometimes if I think it's going to be negative or. Yeah. So I feel a bit more in control and my following is smaller, but my reach is higher. So before I would have like 50K followers, but I would only get like 200 likes on mm -hmm. a selfie. Whereas now, like, I might get 300 and my following's only at 3,000. Wow. So I think it's not about follower, it's about reach. Which people yeah. want to, yeah. Interesting. So I've just looked, I've just looked at it completely differently, and I don't know. I'm just more comfortable with just posting what I want and not feeling pressured to post a product or pressured to look a certain way. I just kind of do what I want now. Yeah, yeah. it's almost uh, what I like about. I mean, for for the people who are listening, we're probably geeking out and being so <laughs> geeking out over the social media. But yeah. I mean. I don't give a fuck. It's my show yeah, and no, I do neither. what I want. It's great. But, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> but what I love about your new account is that it does feel like you are in control. Yeah. Like you, definitely. it feels because like, yeah, yeah it, to me from being an outsider looking in, it feels like you've posted this with a purpose. You're yeah. in more in control of uh, what you want people to see and who you are as a person. And definitely when there was one photo that you posted and it was just like an ab shot of you. And what I, what I loved the most about that photo is that you turned off the, the comment section. Yeah. Cause that to me was you saying, look, this is the work that I put into my body. I'm yeah. so proud of it, but I know that I'm going to get some fucking probably get some hate on it. So fuck yeah. you all. I'm going to exactly. turn this off. And this That's is just for me. Now <laughs> is like, Cause people will look at it and, People will look at like nude models or like glamour modeling or any anybody, female or male person that puts themselves on the internet like mm -hmm. nude or semi clothes and just be like, oh, you're doing it for attention or like comments. So it's just like, no, this is what I've done and this is what I've achieved and here it is. And like, I don't care about your opinion. I'm not doing this to get, you know, a positive feedback. I'm purely doing it because this is who I am and I enjoy sharing it with people. Mm. And I really don't care for your opinion. Like, if I wanted your opinion, I would have asked, my caption would have been a comment or a question, and I would have left it open for you yeah. to reply. But yeah. right now, I don't care what you have to say. And if you have a mm. problem, you can slide into my DMs and we'll talk it out. <laughs> 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 and I will so happily simple. debate with you. <laughs> so simple. The, the, the solution to that is so simple. Just slide exactly. on into the DMs. <laughs> just, you know, if you, if you have something negative to say, like actually put effort into saying it and don't just comment shit and troll. Like yeah. if you want, if you feel like you have a valid opinion and you can't comment it, put some effort in and we'll actually debate instead of just, you know, leaving a hateful comment because you're in a bad mood. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're in a bad mood. Yeah, exactly. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. But anyway, Naomi, thank you so much for taking time out of your Sunday okay. to be. That's okay. My pleasure. It's been great. Yeah, for being on my show. Um, so little little tidbit for you. This, this show that you and me have done, uh, yeah. a lot of people have either commented on the website or emailed me personally how excited they are about hearing the show. Really? So, yeah. As soon as oh. I started promoting it and started emailing about it, yeah. people were very, very excited to hear um, your voice. Oddly yeah. enough, people really? want to hear your voice. My voice is terrible. I'm so whiny. My, my <laughs> accent, I've traveled so much that I don't even know what my accent is. Like, I'll listen to my voice back and it's disgusting. I apologize to whoever is listening <laughs> for putting well, up with me. <laughs> your accent, uh, honestly, it is a little everywhere, but that's yeah. okay. That's what makes you you. <laughs> Yay. Oh, well, that's exciting. Thank you so much yeah. for having me. Like, 
I like again I just want to reinforce that like I really appreciate people that follow me and you know support what I do and I just want everyone to be like comfortable in who they are and what they do and like not let social media dictate to you what's attractive and what's not attractive and like what you should and shouldn't be doing with your life because like at the end of the day nobody gives a fuck about anyone else's opinion you know like just mm -hmm. just do you <laughs> just do that you a nice cheesy comment to end with that's perfect. So. That's perfect. That's the perfect yeah. way to end it. And on that note, really? thank you, Naomi. Thank you. And we're, and we're done with the show. Goodbye, everyone. Okay. Thanks. Bye. And that is the show. That is the show. That's the show done. That's the show done. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast. That should be a jingle just to announce that the show is done. And then I'll do the outro. <clears throat> Yeah, that'll work. Anyway, uh, thank you very much to our Patreon supporters, uh, Attain Health and Wellbeing. Go visit them, cats, attainhealth.co.nz to see what they can do to help you on your fitness journey. Redbeard Barbell, Tim and Jackie Mercer, the owners of it, go to redbeardbarbell.com and see how they can get you on that lifting platform or just any advice on health and nutrition. They're uh, very, very knowledgeable and they're awesome people. Uh, very, very, very open. So if you, if you have any questions or queries, they're not scared to uh, jump right into it with you. So it's one of those sayings, uh, not a, I mean, what's that saying? There's no such thing as a stupid question. Yeah. It, it drives very, very true with those guys. And my bro, Mr. Jonathan Haggard in Wellington. Um, remember to follow him at, on Instagram at a W A H O U B R O. He's a cool dude, inspirational dude. I love following that cat. So, uh, yeah, if you want a special shout out on the show, Go to patreon.com slash honor and conquer to see how you can be rewarded in the process of your pledge. Okay? You'll get all the cool stuff. Things that won't even be available to the public. Like 30% off apparel and shows before they even air and videos and exclusive content. So it's all good stuff. And as well, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this podcast. Go to your favorite podcast app that you use, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or Google Play. Rate the shower a five-star show. Um... Uh, leave a review in the comment section and please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so uh, it'll help me get more listeners and get this show in more and sh get this show in more ears oh my gosh can i use my words today what time is it it's not even <clears throat> 10 30 10 yeah 10 30 in the morning that's all good <clears throat> I'm doing it good. And thank you very much to our podcast sponsors as well. Me e Paleo. Go to meepaleo.com. Uh, use our promo code HONOR for a 10% discount off your online order, off your nut butters. And go to honorandconquer.com slash it. Thank you to our friends at Onnit for special podcast discounts just for you guys only. Okay? Just super special podcast discounts. Honorandconquer.com slash it. That is the show done with me. Goodbye and good night.